In the heart of ancient Hazanlu, an incredible discovery was made that would leave the world in awe. Two lovers from a distant past, found in an intimate embrace, their story echoing through millennia. The catch? Both are male and unrelated to one another. Both carry paternal haplogroup are one b and belonged to the Manian culture. The Manian kingdom, also known as Manai, was an ancient Indo-European civilization that existed in what is now modern-day Iran and parts of western Azerbaijan during the Iron Age. The Manian people were primarily known for their kingdom, which existed roughly from the 10th century BC to the 7th century BC. The Urartians, who lived in this region during the same period, might be responsible for the deaths of these two individuals. Let's name them Faisal and Muhammad. This video is about their autosomal DNA, phenotype, traits, and GED match results. This is what Faisal looked like. With my Nashakot, he is predicted to have brown color eyes, Greek shaped nose, and black hair. Uh, for eye shape prediction, he's predicted to have Middle Eastern or Estonian or South Asian eye shape, which are morphologically pretty similar to one another. Uh, he's predicted to have wavy hair, followed by curly, followed by straight, and probably not kinky hair. And what's interesting is he's quite a lot darker in pigmentation than Mohammed. When you look at his genotype, uh, he doesn't have any derived variants in SLC uh, 45A2. He does have derived variants in SLC 24A5, but he doesn't have any derived variants in SLC 45A2 and Keto G, which is one of the most important variations for our uh, skin color. So him not having any derived or light color variants in the Keto G skin color variation is very exotic for a, um, a Eurasian, and he might have had indeed a darker brown hair sh um, skin shade as YSEC is showing there, maybe maybe even as dark as the YSEC prediction. Uh, he doesn't really have any variance, variations for uh, lighter pigmentation aside from maybe his genotype in uh, TPCN, uh, TPCN2, which has to do with blonde hair, a uh, very rare genotype by the way, and I made a mistake in my uh, image, you see it says equals zero, which should be equal to two, because he had two derived variants there, so I just made a mistake when, with the paint image, don't worry about it too much. Um, and another another light color genotype he's got, I guess, is his genotype in SLC 2485. So that's an, another light color genotype that he has. But overall, he's a very dark individual. He's darker than Mohammed by a long shot. Uh, and uh, we can see that even the light color variants he does, that he does have in SLC 2484, uh, they don't really contribute all that much to uh, to coloring of skin or eyes or hair. They, they're very weak, uh, pretty insignificant variants, right? Uh, his genotype in Asip, for example, where he has one derived variant there, it's significant in skin color, but um, one derived variant is not even all that light. It's it's less than what's typical for Eurasians in general. So he's a dark color individual by all metrics, and um, I think he looked like the way I depicted him in the image here. He's got this genotype, which increases the odds of obesity and insulin resistance. Uh, here's another genotype he has, which increases the odds of obesity and type 2 diabetes. Now, when it comes to DRD2, he's got a heterozygous genotype in profrenatine pro, so intermediate uh, amount of dopamine D2 receptors in the brain, intermediate risk of schizophrenia and being a no-go learner. He's got A2A2 genotype in this variation of DRD2. Uh, it's TAC1, which basically means better avoidance of errors, normal OCD risk, um, normal amount of D2 dopamine receptors, whereas A1A1 would be less dopamine D2 receptors and various uh, risks for ADHD, Parkinson's, all kinds of issues that have to do with uh, less dopamine D2 receptors. He's got warrior genotype in Compt's Valmet variation, which means uh, Valval higher Compt and zygomatic activity, quicker breakdown of dopamine, less dopamine in the system. Uh, the implications of this genotype is that he would have better stress resilience, however, disadvantage in memory and attention tasks. He's got the sociopath gene, which is a derived OXTR, and um, uh, when it comes to EDAR, he does not have derived or East Asian EDAR. Uh, when it comes to lactose persistence, he does not have the European lactose persistence mutation. Well, he's not a European, so he doesn't have it. And he's got this genotype, which actually sort of protects him from myopia, uh, which is nearsightedness or where you need glasses to see in a, in a distance. And according to his genome, it's pretty unlikely that he would have male pattern boldness since he has so many different genotypes for a reduced male pattern boldness risk. 
And finally, he's got this genotype, which greatly increases his risk of having a cleft lip. But I think if he had a cleft lip, that would be apparent from his skeleton, and that would be something the researchers uh, would note. When it comes to polygenic traits, he's got an above average risk score for type 2 diabetes. Um, he's got an above average risk score for coronary heart disease. He's got an above average risk score for Parkinson's disease. Uh, he's got a high risk score for bipolar disorder. Uh, he's got a average risk score for type 1 diabetes. Uh, he's got an average risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, he's got a high risk score for asthma. Uh, he's got a low risk score for stroke and finally he's got an average or maybe slightly above average risk score for brain aneurysm. Now let's move on to his GD match results. This is what he scores with Eurogenes K13 and what we can instantly notice from this result is the overabundance of South Asian and West Asian that he's scoring. This individual clearly uh, is an Iranic individual with a lot of perhaps BMAC or Iranian Neolithic farmer admixture, maybe he's even got some Caucasus hunter gather, but I think most of his West Asian admixture is from Iranian Neolithic farmers and BMAC. Uh, now, he does have a little bit of Northern European admixture as well, which is why he's closest to Kurds and Iranians, who do have also a little bit of Northern European admixture too. Uh, this is also what Hassan Lu samples, samples are most similar with uh, illustrative DNA. Also, Kurds and Iranians show up the f in the first couple populations for Hassan Lu samples. And he's getting modeled here as a mixture of Kurdish plus Baloch or Kurdish plus Brahwi, so maybe a little bit more um, South Central Asian shifted relative to the Kurds. And with MZLPK16, he's scoring 12.5% step and also 2% Northeast European. I want you guys to pay attention to this because this individual clearly does have step, um, Western step herder admixture. And I was reading an article that was talking about how uh, somehow these samples prove that, uh, somehow these samples prove that uh, Indo European homeland is not in the south of Russia and, you know, basically the steppe because apparently they don't have step admixture, but they do. Like, they clearly do have steppe admixture, and they have a steppe haplogroup, R1b. R1b is not a West Asian haplogroup. It's a European hunter-gatherer haplogroup. So, he's got a European hunter-gatherer haplogroup. He's scoring European hunter-gatherer components. What more do you want? Um, this is clearly somebody with steppe admixture. The thing is, there's really solid continuity from European hunter-gatherers to Yamne, to um, Sintashta, to Recorded Word and Sintashta, to Andronovo, and finally to these Indo-Iranians, in the Middle East. There's very clear continuity and you see these individuals having Yamne input, you see these individuals having corded wear or Yamne input in their DNA. Uh, so when you try to deny that and say that instead this is some kind of Tokarian, I've, 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 I mean I don't want to legitimize these kinds of views by talking about them here, but somebody has been seriously trying to tell me that Sintashta and Andronovo were Takarians and had nothing to do with Indo-Iranians, and in fact, Indo-Iranians, Indo-Aryans were uh, BMAC people. Uh, it's crazy stuff. You, you, if why, why does this Kurd have Tokarian DNA then? Why does this Kurd score 15 or what is it? Seven times seven Northeast Euro times two. That's fifteen percent Takarian. Why is this Kurdish individual? Why is this Hassan Lu individual scoring fifteen percent Takarian? If Sintashta is Takarian, why is he scoring fifteen percent Takarian? Explain that to me, you stupid racist. Explain that to me. And I know that me talking about that here, it's just gonna provoke these individuals to be nasty in the comments and leave long. Uh, essays in the comments about how I'm stupid and how I don't know what I'm doing and how I should quit YouTube. There's, you're going to see that in the comments of this video for sure. But the thing is, uh, this actually is good for me because this brings, this brings, uh, what is it, what is it called? Um, engagement rate, yeah. That brings the engagement rate up, which means I earn more money for the advertisements. So, thanks, you can, you can keep trolling and that actually helps me. So, uh, I win either way. Now we move on to the second individual, this is Mohammed. He's predicted to have also brown eyes, Greek shaped nose and black hair with Manasha Kotul. Uh, for eye shape, he's predicted to have South Asian eye shape actually, which is... Tell me the difference between South Asian and Middle Eastern eye shape. Can you really tell me the difference? Is there really a difference? I don't think there is. So, for all we, for all we care, he's got the same eye shape and the same traits as the previous individual. He's actually also scoring uh, mostly wavy, followed by curly, followed by straight hair. So he's got even the same hair texture as the previous individual. They're probably looking pretty similar, except Mohammed is a lot lighter. He's a lot lighter because he's got um, two draft variants in Asip, and he's also lighter because he's got um, 
two draft variants in the SLC 24A4, and he's got actually some draft variants in Tier 1 and IRF 4 as well, and he's also got a lighter genotype in SLC 24A4. He's just all around lighter than the previous individual, except when it comes to TPCN2. In this one, he's only got one rare blonde variant, whereas the previous individual got two. So he's quite a lot lighter, and he did not have BH1 or the main variant in BH2 or BH3 or BH4, but he had another variant in OCA2 um, gene, which is actually, I class this variant in BH2, which is very interesting that he has two draft variants here, but not in the main variation of BH2, that's um, Snipper Free, for example, or uh, YSEC looks for. So it's very interesting, is this, is this due to this linkage, or perhaps this is another branch that I mistake, mistakenly grouped in BH2, Blue Hepatype 2, uh, I haven't seen any such cases before to suggest so, but that could be the case. Or it could be just him having two ancestors, or maybe a single ancestor uh, from two different, two distinct branches of his lineage, who's got a dislinkage event in this variation. He's a carrier for one of the hemochromatosis uh, mutations. Hemochromatosis is called the Celtic curse very often, because it's very predominant in Northwest Europeans, and specifically Irish people have it at a high frequency, uh, higher than pretty much anybody else in the world. Um, but it's very interesting. I also carry the hemochromatosis variations. That's why it's so interesting to me. And he's got this genotype, which I don't think I should pronounce that what it is because, you know, YouTube ad revenue and all that stuff, they might um, have a problem with that. But you've, you, we all saw it. And he's got, uh, doesn't have any no-go learner variants in drd 2 sporophyll and pro variation, so more dopamine D2 receptors, uh, higher odds of schizophrenia. Mohammed's got a 2A2 genotype in TAC1 variation of DRD2, which means normal amount of D2 dopamine receptors compared to A1A1, which would be less D2 dopamine receptors, and A1A1 would have uh, various connotations such as higher ADHD risk, alcohol dependence, all kinds of issues with dopamine, and which he doesn't have, and he's got warrior genotype in comets valmet variation, which, you mean, which means uh, val val, higher comet activity, which means less dopamine in the system, problems with attention and motivation, however, advantages in stress resiliency. He also does have the derived OXTR, which is what I call the sociopath gene here, so he's got the sociopath gene, and he doesn't have derived EZAR, so no East Asian facial traits, no shell-shaped incisors, and uh, does not have European lactose persistence mutation and also does have the mutation that protects against myopia, which is nearsightedness or being unable to see in the distance. When it comes to polygenic traits, Mohammed's got a super high risk score for Parkinson's disease, he's got a high risk score for schizophrenia, uh, he's got an average risk score for type 2 diabetes, uh, he's got an average risk score for coronary heart disease. Mohammed's got an average risk score for bipolar disorder. Uh, he's got an average or slightly above average risk score for brain aneurysm. He's got a high risk score for asthma. And he's got a below average risk score for type 1 diabetes. This is what Mohammed scores with Eurogenes K13. You can see he's a lot less West Asian and a lot less South Asian than Faisal. He's uh, more similar to various Mediterranean groups rather than West Asian groups, right? But he's still closest to Kurds, followed by Iranians, followed by Georgian Jews. Uh, he's still quite Kurdish in his ancestry. However, he's getting more as a mixture of Kurdish plus Assyrian, or Kurdish plus Jewish, or Kurdish plus Lebanese. So the, the shift seems to be more towards um, the Mediterranean direction, rather than, for example, Baloch, which was the previous individual, right? So this guy is more Western, uh, a little bit more Mediterranean shifted than the previous individual, than, than Faisal. Uh, with MZLPK16, this is what he scores. With the Oracle, he's once again closest to Kurds from Syria, followed by Azeris. And he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Armenian plus Iranian or Armenian plus Jad. So it seems that Armenians are more Western and more Mediterranean shifted than Iranians, right? So relative to the Iranians, he's more Western shifted, but, but relative to the Armenians, he's more Eastern shifted. This is what he scores with Harappa World. I want to uh, turn your attention towards the 6% Northeast European that he's scoring. Uh, once again, the Iranian Neolithic farmers and um, Anatolian hunter-gatherers, Anatolian, hunter Anatolian Neolithic farmers, they don't score Northeast European. This is not a component that these individuals score. The only source of this component in uh, this individual's genome is from European hunter-gatherers or uh, steppe people in southern Russia. That's the only way he could get this European hunter-gatherer component in his ancestry. It's from step admixture. Uh, with the Oracle, he's a little bit more Middle Eastern shifted relative to Kurds. And with PondNALK12, once again, we see 6.5% European hunter-gatherer component. 
this European hunter-gatherer component was not found. Like if you look at uh, Iranian Neolithic samples or if you look at Anatolian Neolithic samples with Pondian ALK12, you're not going to see European hunter-gatherer. This is admixture that came from outside of Western Asia, that came from Europe, and um, it's quite a lot of admixture. It's around 12 or 13 percent step or Yamnaya admixture in total. And with the oracle here, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Iranian plus Sicilian. So relative to the Iranians, shifted a little bit towards uh, Mediterraneans and Southern Europeans, it seems. This is what Mohammed scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. Uh, interesting result. What's super interesting about this result to me is that he's scoring actually 2% East Asian. Uh, I wonder where this admixture could come from. Maybe it comes from some kind of uh, Iranic source that he picked, that Iranic people picked up along the way. Or maybe it's just noise, I don't know. Uh, with the oracle, he's closest to Iranians, followed by Azeri, and he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Chalcolithic Iranian plus Libyan Jew, or Neolithic Iranian plus Cypriot. So relative to the Neolithic Iranians, uh, clearly very shifted towards the Mediterranean region. Uh, with Gedrosia K3, this individual is very West Eurasian, a little bit of affinities towards East Eurasians and Sub-Saharan Africans, uh, but that is present in every Middle Eastern population. For Middle Eastern groups, this seems like a very typical result. And thanks for watching my video until the end. You can download both of these samples in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Goodbye.